So, so hello, Kevin. Hello, Samuel. How are you? I am very good. How are you? I'm fine, fine. Kevin, can you uh, introduce yourself and explain uh, how long have you been working uh, with uh, Inesis and what is your job? Yes, perfect. Um, my name is Kevin Mayu. Uh, I've been with the uh, Inesis team for three, almost four years now. And um, I've been helping with uh, mostly some 3D uh, modeling side, but also a lot of info on the engineering side. Um, with my experience in golf, uh, I've worked with uh, some major companies, uh, TaylorMade, Wilson, Staff, uh, Adams Golf. Um, I've uh, inherited a lot of knowledge uh, on the engineering side as it pertains to material selection and how we orient the center of gravity to produce uh, different ball flights for different types of players. Um, so uh, it was really exciting to implement those types of uh, key features into the 900 um, iron program. Do you have uh, any uh, uh, images of, uh, of your, your, your job to, to show us so we can... Uh, we can uh, yep, absolutely. Uh, so uh, right here you have the four utility iron and the uh, seven, uh, it's the uh, hollow cavity iron. Um, so I did want to focus on some of the differences between these two hollow clubs. Um, so you can see the utility iron has a larger sole. Um, this allows us to have a more forgiving club, but then when you look down from the top, uh, it's not like a large hybrid, right? Like you see on the 500 and the 100 sets. So this this is a very attractive look to the 900 player. Uh, as well as the 7 iron, you can see it's just a nice looking iron. However, it is hollow. Um, so you can see here uh, where we have an injection material that we will use to help improve the feel. Um, so I can cut a cross section so you can get a better idea of what's going on inside. Um, so I referenced a thinner face right here. Um, we use that uh, Martin site aging process, the miraging steel, right, um, to uh, essentially make this face thinner, uh, which produced higher uh, ball speeds, uh, which in turn gives us better distance, right? So you can see these are 2.3 millimeters uh, thick. Uh, a lot of faces are not that thin. Um, whenever you're just using your standard 10-4 um, stainless steel. So uh, again, this uh, allows us to have a lot more options as far as developing the design. Um, I can do another cross section to where you can see exactly how the face. Because we uh, had additional material to use, uh, I was able to have a, uh, a larger inside cavity that you can see here. There's a lot of material uh, down here in this area, and that gives us the best uh, smash factor um, mm. that we can for this iron. Smash factor has become a very popular term in the golf industry. Essentially, it's the ratio of the ball speed produced by the given club head speed. Yeah. Um, sometimes you can't achieve the highest smash factor in your 100 and 500 clubs because you have to m put more material on the toe and the heel to improve the MOI, right? Um, smash factor is improved when you have a lot of mass right behind the face. Um, so that's what I wanted to show you here. And it's the same as well on the uh, on the utility club. Yes, but it means that players are able to hit uh, perfectly the center of the face. Yep, exactly. And uh, is there a lot of uh, loss when, you, uh, when you, your ball is a bit off center? No, not, and that's why we went with the hollow clubs for the five, six, and seven. Um, traditionally, uh, you can certainly have a design where you have all blades, um, but as you get up to the three and the four iron, the faces get smaller and you start to lose forgiveness. Um, so there is a built-in forgiveness on these irons, but we're also able to make them playable. Uh, when I say workability, right, to be able to draw the ball, it also does provide the forgiveness because of the hollow nature, right? So we have that thinner face that produces higher ball speeds, uh, even off of off-center hits. Okay. Well, thank you. Have a, have okay. a nice day. Take thank care. you, Samuel. Have a good day. Bye, Damien. Bye. <laughs>